1,400 feet above sea level and miles away from the nearest town is a lake. And this was the location of today's fishing trip. But why on earth is there a lake up here and were there even any fish in it to catch? Today, we would be trying to find out. First though, we had to find our way to the water. Our van certainly wasn't built for off-roading. We finally made it. The drive was a little bit tricky. I thought it would be easier to be honest, but the uh, dew on the grass, like the wet uh, condensation made it quite a lot more difficult than we were expecting. But we are here. The lake is in front of us. The sun is gradually rising over the horizon there. And yeah, I'm gonna get to it and try and catch some carp. So why had we made this journey to the top of a mountain to catch some fish? Well, the fish in this lake are thought to be some of the wildest carp in Britain, and as close as you're likely to get to the original carp that all other strains have been bred from. They are incredibly rare. Just having a little walk around, got a couple of different options to try on a few different rods. Got a bucket of bait, and we're gonna walk along this bank here, below the cliff face, and uh, try and find some feeding fish. I've just been walking along this margin and we're, with the sun where it is, there's not much reflection. I can see quite deep into the water and every now and then I see a swirl come up, a tail pattern and uh, a dark shape. I've just been trying to cast as close as I can to them, but these fish are so spooky. Any movement and they are just spooked into the middle. I think we've got to go a little bit more stealthy. It certainly hasn't been easy so far. We have found some fish, but they, di they didn't bite. Alex, yeah. you know you're talking about moving out. Come over here. You're suggesting I should live underneath a rock. So just channel your like inner Bear grills and just tuck yourself under there for the night. See? You thought I was joking, but actually that looks so comfy. It's quite nice actually. Oh, maybe not. Ooh, getting, getting the odd twitch on the line. I can't tell whether it's the minnows or whether there's actually carp down there. Yep, no way. We've got a fish. We've got a fish. Look at all the bubbles coming up. <laughs> Can't quite believe it. We were we were trying all morning. The fish were proving to be so spooky, but we found some mud stirring up. Plopped a bit of free line corn over the top. And we've hooked out. 
Yes. Oh, what a relief. I was about to say, Alex, what a relief. It's starting to get really hot now, but those fish were just, as soon as they could see, see us or feel some vibrations of our footsteps, they were off. And it proved by sitting still for a bit, just casting a bit of corn out and just leaving it for about 10, 20 minutes. Ah, one came and took our bait. And that in your net is a type of carp I've never caught before. It's wild. It's the wildest carp we're ever likely to catch, probably. Yeah. This is why we came up this mountain. To catch tiny little to fish. Tiny, <laughs> yeah. It's a very special one because it is... Unchanged for... Hundreds, mi thousands... Thou millions. I don't years. know how long carp have actually been about, but... They are very powerful. They've got big fins for the size of their body. Oh, I've got one. What? Uh, they're wet. They are wet. Every carp is wet. But is it wet when you take it out of the water? Mm. Or is it wet when it's in the water? Good question. <laughs> we'll save that debate for another time. We got one. Yay. Oh, I need one now. You do. It was now Carl's turn. He had the rest of the day to try and catch one. But with the sun so bright and the carp so spooky, he opted for a static approach, casting a rod out and simply waiting and hoping for a fish to find it. The fish in this lake are thought to have been stocked around the 14th century, 700 years ago. It's hard to find solid evidence from such a long time ago, but nevertheless, it's impressive that the carp have survived up here where temperatures reach minus 20 in the depths of winter. These wildies, although not big, are the ancestors of all the carp varieties and strains you see today. This is what carp looked like before humans started cultivating them. This is tricky. A few hours have passed. I haven't caught one. Now, I, <laughs> I was just about to start making excuses. I was about to say that the sun's quite bright, and then I just thought, what a rubbish excuse. The sun's always bright. Uh, also, um, sweet corn isn't as sweet as people think it is. And I reckon that's got something. The pH of the water, that's See, when you get to the root of it, you know, of course you're not going to catch fish. I've been told by a number of reputable, repu is that even a word? Sources that there's actually no fish in here. So, we've had to take a break. First of all, because the fishing is really difficult. And second of all, because I'm tired, I'm frustrated. Yeah, it has not been easy. It's just a, it's but... just a very stark contrast from this place to where we were fishing last week. Oh, last, yeah. last week we were on a place called Ashbury Fisheries. This is really high up on top of a mountain. Where we were the other week was down on some farmland just, just nearby to a, a town in Essex. This place has got really small carp that are so spooky and difficult to catch. And we were catching numbers of really good fish over at Ashbury. So the reason why we were at that particular place was because we'd been invited down by Simon McCabe. Now, he has been a great help to us over the years. He, he actually designed and made our first website. Yeah, I don't know how many years ago that, that was. It was a long time ago. <laughs> 10 years ago. And in more, in more recent years, he uh, made, made those stickers for yeah, our website. He made those stickers that we sell on our website and he helped with our original logo mm. and all sorts really. And we hadn't, we've, we've never actually gone fishing with him before. So it was uh, about time we met up with him and did some fishing. You somehow managed to catch a carp whilst standing in a tree. Don't know how that happened. Catching one from up a tree was probably the highlight of that session. But yeah, that session was wicked. Uh, like I was saying, just such a massive 
contrast from, from this place. I think because they're not that big, and because there's no humans here to disturb the wildlife, I reckon, like we saw a red kite yesterday. I reckon if those carp are in the shallow water, that bird would, would come down and try and grab it. Like they've got it's predators a, here. It's a good point. These carp are relatively small and they can they can be predated on. You know, like I bet I bet cormorants or, or kites or ospreys, do they, do you get them around here? I don't really know. Not, Buzzards, we, they we might go that, for them. We saw that kite yesterday. But yeah, the fish here are incredibly wary and on edge and it just makes them very hard to catch. Another thing we wanted to uh, mention whilst we just take a break and sit down is lots of people messaging us asking how's Charlie, how are our koi, give us an update on our fish tank. Uh, we will, <laughs> we will, we will, we will. Uh, we've just been quite busy and haven't got around to it yet. But stay tuned on the channel soon for, for that. You'll put some stuff, um, you'll let people know about the incredible uh, cucumbers as well. I'll do, yeah, I'll do a bit of an update on all my veg I've been growing. Anyway, we better try and catch one. Yeah, we better. You better. I I've, thought I've caught a wild carp from the mountain lake. Yeah, all right. Sure all right, about. you've caught one. So what? I don't care. I'm gonna have a millionaire short breath. Oh yeah, now that we've got that ad ad revenue from YouTube, we we, we <laughs> billionaire shortbread. Did you know that a millionaire shortbread doesn't cost a million pounds? That's a good point, actually. But they are. It costs like two pound fifty or something for yeah. four. Mmm. That was so good as well. After our lunch break, Carl changed tactics and fished a method feeder with some small pellets squeezed around. The carp had completely disappeared from the margins and so a further cast was needed into deeper water. We'd probably have to wait until evening before the fish would get confident and start feeding closer in, but what a beautiful place to spend some time. got to that stage in the session where I'm starting to think I might go home empty-handed. It's been so difficult to find the fish here with the glare on the surface but also just the fact that I don't think there's really that many fish in this lake. Either that or there, there's hundreds of them and I'm rubbish. It's never mattered more to me to catch a carp. This is gonna be the best chance I get today. We've got so little time left. Doesn't look good. One just jumped out. <gasps> it's on my bait. It's on the bait. Yes! No way! I've actually hooked one. <laughs> Oh, and it's a beauty. Yes. Can you imagine if it fell off now? Oh, no. Are you actually joking? Yeah, it didn't snap the line, it just fell off. My hook is just there. Some days are good days. And others are <laughs> No, and others were there just to test you. 